Welcome to episode 37 of Vampire Survivors Like Game in Unity. In the last episode we introduced piercing through multiple enemies. But the setting of how many enemies eat spears is set on the projectile. We want to make it be based on the weapon stats which shoot this projectile. And to do this first we want to generalize the projectile class. We have two weapons which makes projectiles gun weapon and throwing knife projectile. And both uses throwing knife projectile script. What we want to do is to generalize this script, because this script is just a projectile script. It manages all the projectile's behavior. So let's make a new script called projectile. We will simply move all the projectile code Let's make stats on the projectile to be private. Replace throwing knife projectile component on the knife prefab with projectile component. Even the weapon shares the same object for projectiles between each other. So now we have a generalized projectile component, which will be attached to every projectile in the game. Delete the throwing knife projectile script. Now we have bunch of issues we need to fix. And you will notice yet another issue. We are repeating ourselves in the throwing knife weapon and in the gun weapon. So let's remove the repeating of the same code by introducing spawn projectile inside weapon base. Move the instantiation of the projectile into the new method. Set the position by passing the position. This is Greg admission of guild. I should have done it from the get-go when I were implementing projectiles. This is 100% my mistake and I apologize. Now we are rectifying this terrible design from the game and I will try to be better in the future. My bad, and once again, I'm sorry. So now to spawn projectiles, we will be using a newly created method, and this method will be shared between each weapon, because it's created in weapon base. So replace the spawn code with the call to this method on the open base. Then after spawning our projectile object, we need to set stats of this object. So create a new method called setStats. 
and pass weapon which shoot this projectile as a parameter. Inside the newly created method we want to set our stats, the speed, the damage and number of hits. Damage is simple, we have specialized method to calculate the damage. Number of hits is a little more tricky. You see we don't have number of hits in our weapons stats. So we need to add them into the weapon stats. Don't forget to add them into constructor and into the sum method. And same for projectile speed. Good. Let's fix all the issues we have created. Pass parameters to the new weapon stats. So now we can see that our numbers of hits and weapon projectile speed can be modified from the weapon data. Now let's deal with the ever-growing weapon stats constructor. This is a mess, so let's instead redo it by simply passing the class. So you're gonna pass the class of the stats into the constructor of the same class type. And inside we will copy the values from the class we passed as a parameter. It's often those type of constructors are called copy constructors, because they copy the state of the other uh, class of the same type. You can notice that old constructor is not used anymore by looking at this zero reference marker. If it's not present, then you will have to take my word for it. So let's delete it. And now our code is way more cleaner. Let's test this.
This episode is brought to you by generous support of people on Patreon and members on YouTube. If you want to join them, link to my Patreon in the description. And join button available right now on YouTube. If you join at $10 or more, you will get access to project files on Patreon. While we are at the stage of adding and modifying stats of the weapon, let's add a new stat for stun of the enemy. Add a new weapon stat called stun. Don't forget to add them into constructor and some method. Inside weapon base, when we detect hit, we call apply damage. Here we want to create and call a new method called apply additional effects. And inside create and call a new method to the iDamageable called stun. Pass the stun value to the newly created method. This will add the stun definition into the interface. Now we need to go into the enemy class and add implementation of the stun method for the interface. Add a new variable called stand. And put the value of stun into it. So now in the update, if stun value is higher than zero, Subtract time delta time from it. Wait, it's fixed update, so subtract fixed time. Good, and if we return out of it, it will mean the enemy is stunned and can't move around. Let's test this. We need to implement stun to the destructible object. But you know you can't stun destructible objects. So, it's good to just leave it empty as is. So let's set VIP as our starting weapon, and set damage low, and stun value to something, well, anything really. Weird, it doesn't work. Let's see why. Let's try to nullify the object velocity when we stun them. Good, it works. But there is an issue, and I think this demonstrates well that keeping yourself from repeating code is an important thing. Look, now if I put throwing knife as our weapon, let's add stun to them and set the damage lower. If I launch game now, you will see that I do deal damage, but no stun is being applied. This is because projectiles are applying damage in a different way. They have their own process of applying damage, which doesn't apply the stun. We added stun to applying damage in the VIP or any other melee weapon, but not for projectiles. So imagine if you have to manually add this process into every time you have a repeating code. It's bad. Imagine forgetting to add it somewhere. Again, it's a bad idea. So let's avoid doing this. Let's store the reference to weapon which chooses projectile. 
And now we will reuse the process of applying damage from the weapon base. Extract the process into the new public method. Let's remove passing of the array and actually pass the position for the post damage. Instead of extracting it from the array. And use this extracted method to apply the damage from the projectiles. Good. Now our throwing knives have stunning capability and we have much less repeating code in our codebase. This is it for this episode. Special thank you to Stormbreaker9000, this old Hashdu. With best regards, see you in the next episode.